Welcome, and we'll start, of course, with our bracha. Baruch Ata Adonai Eloheinu Melech Haolam Asher Kitshana B'mitzvotah B'tivano Lasoch B'divrei Torah. Amen. Amen. So I am going to just let you know that um, in terms of the laws that are coming up, it does get it does get uh, quite detailed and uh, um, somewhat complicated. So please feel free to ask me questions for clarification, if or of course other kinds of questions if you need to, uh, just to try and understand what's going on. And um, all right, so let's let's get started. It's a whole different subject here, and it has to do with the perquisites of the priests and the Levites. Lo ye la kohanim halevi'im the kol shevet levi. Okay, so the Levitical priests and the entire tribe of Levi shall not have chelek v'nachala, a portion and an inheritance in Yisrael with Israel. Ishe Hashem v'nachalato yochelum, the fire offerings of the Lord and his inheritance they shall consume they will consume. Here we go. So just as the word rock is some kind of diminution, right, some kind of limitation, the word call means uh, to add something that we normally wouldn't, that if the word were left out, um, something would be, something would not be included. And the example I like to give of how the word all functions, even in English, is that if I were to say to you, please give me your marbles, you would give me your marbles. But if I were to say to you, please give me all your marbles, okay, you may have to go hunting for marbles that might have rolled under the couch, etc. that all would include things that normally you wouldn't necessarily include if I were to simply say, please give me your marbles. So that's the way in which this word all functions, that it adds something that normally one might not think of. So, so obviously if we're talking about the tribe of Levi, right, we're talking about the tribe of Levi. But what do we mean when we say all the entire tribe of Levi. So he says, this is what Rashi tells us, whether they are um, in perfect state, or whether they have some kind of physical defect. Because if they were to have a physical defect, it's possible, certainly as Kohanim, who are also members of the tribe of Levi, would not be able to uh, actually offer up. Uh, I want to remind you, though, that a Kohen who has a physical, a, a severe physical defect, like a broken limb or missing a limb or something like that, while they cannot go up on the altar and participate in offering the sacrifices, they are nevertheless entitled to those parts of the offering that all the other priests or that the priests who actually offer up the sacrifice, they're also entitled to those parts as well. So, so remember, they did not get a portion, a chilek. Rashi explains, what do we mean by portion? We mean babiza. That has to do with the spoil of spoils of war, that they do not get that, right? They don't, they're not entitled to it. The nachala, that would have to do, right, a, a portion and a inheritance in the land. So they do not get that kind of territory, right? We know that there were, however, they had to live somewhere. And in fact, there were Levitical cities, but they did not share in the tribal allotments. They did not get any of that. Ishe Hashem, the fire offerings of Hashem. So he explains, this is of course what they are entitled to. Kodshe HaMikdash, uh, the, the sanctified objects sanctified into the sanctuary, 
and certainly uh, elements of the fire offerings. The Levites weren't necessarily entitled to that. They were entitled to other kinds of kodshim. That's, for example, like a tithe that went to the Levites, right? And he says, Sfarim, Acherim, other manuscripts, other versions of it say, Kodshe HaKodshim, right? Or Kodashim, meaning the, the, the holy of holy. So very holy uh, um, offerings that they were entitled. There were parts of it that they were entitled to. And you know that even when it came to an entire offering, when essentially the entire offering in Olah, where the entire offering was uh, consumed on part of it on the altar, part of it was burned outside of the camp, and the, the, basically the entire offering was offered up in some way or another. Nevertheless, the priest who actually brought that offering was entitled to the hide of the animal so that they got some payment for what they were doing. At any rate, and, and certainly all lot would be koche kochim, and there were other kinds of similar offerings. Nachalato, his inheritance, and uh, according to the Sfaria, and I think they're right, okay, but I just wanted to give them an attribution, Elu Kodshe Hagvu. This has to do with sanctified, uh, um, say, food or, or, or produce that was sanctified, set aside uh, outside of the, um, the uh, walls of Jerusalem. And he gives examples, Trumot, the Truma, and he'll talk about the Truma a little bit later. Uh, and it was, a, it was given to the priests. Only priests, Kohanim, uh, were entitled to Truma. It had a, was part of the very first um, part of the produce. Once it was brought, uh, once it was brought basically to the uh, granary and smoothed out into the pile and ready to take to market. And then part of it had to be, it was basically, he'll explain in more detail. So I won't do that right now. But part of that was then given to the Kohen. That had actually a status of sanctity uh, on the level of the fact that it had to be kept away from any possible impure source. So no impure, impure object could come in touch with it. Only Kohanim were permitted to consume it, to eat it, and the Kohen himself had to be in a state of purity in order to consume Truma. So Masrot are tithes, and they certainly were given to Levi'im. That was a prime source uh, for the Levi'im of, of food and produce. Uh, and also, of course, there were also cattle tithes and sh sheep tithes, etc. So these went to the levy, uh, basically Maasarishon, the first tithe. And then the, pre the Levite had to tithe what they received as a tithe and give that to the Kohanim. <clears throat> Aval Nachala Gumura, right? Lo yelo, but a complete inheritance, he would not have the care of Achiv in the midst of his brothers, meaning, of course, we're talking about the land that was apportioned. And in the Sifre, that's that Midrash on the book of Numbers and the book of Deuteronomy, Darshu, right, they, they interpreted the Nachala lo yielo, that when the Torah said, and he shall not have a nachala, a, an inheritance, right? Zo nachalat sha'ar. And this is the, um, it meant the inheritance of the remaining. Now, that's literally what the word sha'ar means. If you don't understand what I just told you, you're in very good company. Um, I actually had to do some further research to try and figure out what exactly that meant. And the good news is that Rashi, in fact, in the next, in his next commentary, is going to talk about the meaning of this, of what do we mean when we talk about the nachala of the remaining. So we'll, we'll get to it in a moment. 
ונחלה לא יהיה לו בקרב אחיו, so we, so we, we, let's see, I just want to make sure, right, okay. Uh, he shall not have an inheritance in the midst of his people, Hashem hu nachalato, the Lord is his inheritance, ka'asher di berlo, as he spoke to him, or about him, that would make more sense, as, as God spoke regarding him, that's how I'd want to understand it. So here we go, bekerev echav, in the midst of his brothers. Zo nachalat chamisha. So this is again, this refers to the inheritance of the five. What five are we talking about? We're talking about the five Canaanite tribes that the Israelites had to defeat and conquer and then inherited their land. So that's well, there was a little five. Rashi before this. Did I not read it? No, I don't think so. I mean, it doesn't really expound that much, but I don't think you did. I thought I covered everything that I'm looking at here. It's similar to the Rashi that you that was on verse one, but yes, after you talked about regarding him, and I, by the way, have to him. I have a Rashi on Venachala Lo Yelo. Yes. Well, you didn't read that. I read this Venachala Lo Yelo. No, 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 the Rashi on it. I said Zor Nachalat Shaar. Okay. I'd, this is the inheritance of the remaining. That's what I read. Oh, maybe you read it before that you read the verse. Uh, no, I think I did just the regular. I, we, we are ha fortunately, we have this recorded so we can see what I did or didn't right. do. Just go ahead. Okay, but I did cover it. In fact, that's okay. this is the whole big. Yeah, you did. Yeah. Okay, no problem. Okay, but thank you for, you know, just checking, right? Okay, uh, so. This is the inheritance of the five. The Eni Yodea Mahi. So Rashi says, I don't know what this refers to. When near Eli, and it appears to me, She'eretz Knaan, that the land of Canaan, She'me'ever Hayardin, that was on the other side of the Jordan, Va'elech, and further on, Nikrate Eretz Hamisha Amamim. Right. That is known. In other words, he's saying, I believe that is referring to, I believe, the five Canaanite tribes. And it's it's in it's a shorthand form of saying the land of the five nations. Veshel Sichon the Og, and regarding that area that was occupied by Sichon, right? King Sichon and King Og, Shte Amabim, right? That refers to two nations. Amori Uknaani, the Amorites and the Canaanites. The Nachalat Sha'ar, and when it's talking here about Nachalat Sha'ar, the inheritance of the remaining, Lerabot, it, it comes to include Kani Uknizi Ukadmoni, the Kenite, the Kenazite, and the Kadmonite, right? The Chain Doresh, the Parshat. Matanot, matanot, and likewise, we expound in the parsha uh, regarding, or the paragraph regarding the gifts that are to be given to the priests, etc. That's in Parshat Korach in the Book of Numbers. Shin emru the Aharon that was said in regards to Aaron, right? Al Cain. For this reason, this is the quote, right? Lo haya lelevi v'gomer. It says, for this reason, Levi, the Levites did not have, did not receive, etc. Mine says uh, Deuteronomy, by the way, Deuteronomy ten nine. Okay, we can check that out. I thought, in when I looked at Safaria, I thought they were um, looking at numbers. We can, I can put a new share in and see if I can find it quickly. One moment, okay. One second here. Uh, let's make sure I find it quickly. Uh, and I could be wrong. Matt, meanwhile, uh, Lauren, do you have the English of the Rashi there? Because that would be interesting because it's kind of hard to, to follow. Okay, give me a second here. The line of thought. Well, uh, I, I have a Tanakh and I have the Deuteronomy. Here, look at this. Okay. Numbers 1820. There it is. Hmm. 
So it could be that Safari is wrong because I didn't check it. I can double, I can look where numbers 1820 is. Oh, I've got it. I've got, well, uh, no, no, no. Uh, Deuteronomy 10.9 says, uh, that is why the Levites have received no inheritance, uh, hereditary portion among, along with okay. their kinsmen. And it's talking about, it's, you know, the two tablets, it's the re reenactment of the two tablets stuff. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. You know. Look at this. Here, this is numbers 20. Right. This is talking to Aaron and his his uh, tribe. You shall not have a portion amongst them. Israel. So that's this is Sifre who's giving this. This is the reference right here. Mm -hmm. uh, regardless, so they both work. I mean, it's just yeah. So maybe it's an another one on top of it. Midbar Yudchet, right? Okay, so. Mm -hmm. It's it's uh, it's a technicality and that's okay. Let me go back to the one we are doing. Sorry. Let me... Does anybody have the Rashi in English? Yes. Could I hear that? If it's up to Rabbi, if he wants me to read it. Absolutely, it's fine. From the beginning. I, I, well, I would like to finish this. That, that yeah. Is, let me get this done. Go ahead. And then then I think it would make sense for you to read it. Okay. <laughs> so he's saying this. This he's ex trying to explain this nachalat sha'ar, right? So, and it's to include another three of these people, okay? So, uh, right, parshat matanot, and we're arguing over whether the parshat matanot is Deuteronomy or Numbers. And I know that in Numbers it talks very much about the reward to Aaron and his sons after Korach, remember, tries to challenge it, right? Um, okay, etc. So that is to to tell him that tell him that the Levites are not to receive a portion of land among the Kenites, the Canaanites, and the Kadmonites. Right. Shuv nimsa bidivrei Rabbi Kolonimus. Right. And again, we find in the words of Rabbi Kolonimus. By the way, this is a very rare moment where Rashi is saying he doesn't really understand what this is about, and he's working with us. Uh, to get an understanding of what's going on here, right? So in the some manuscript he found of this Rabbi Klonimus, Hachi Garsinan Besifre, this is the version in the Sifre, the Nachala Lo Yelo, right? That's the uh, the verse, Elu Nachala Chamisha. This refers to the inheritance of the five. Okay. Um, the Kerev Achiv, Elu Nachala Shiva. This is the, this is Clonimus. I think he's still possibly quoting here. And that is these, this is the portion of the seven. So let me keep going and then I'll try and back up on what we're talking about. Nachalat chamisha shvatim. So now we're talking about the inheritance of the other Israelite tribes, right? So we're referring to the inheritance of five of the tribes, the Nachalat Shivash Vatim, and the inheritance of seven tribes. Omitoch Shemoshe, and, and the reason we're dividing them up in this way, right, is because Moses and Joshua, Lo Chalku Nachala, they were not, Joshua and Moses didn't actually apportion out the sections of land. They only did it for five of the tribes, Bilvad, alone. Shekane Moshe, because if you look into the detail of it, Moses apportioned out the Ruvain to the tribe of Ruvain, God to the tribe of God, the Chatsi Shevet Menashe, and half of the tribe of Menashe. So that's three tribes, right? Or two and a half tribes. The Yoshua, Hinchil, and Joshua. Uh, apportioned land, Lehuda, to Judah, the Ephraim, and to Ephraim, Ulachatsi Shevet Menashe, and also to half the tribe of Menashe. That makes a total of five tribes, five complete tribes. Beshivah Achirim, and the other seven tribes, Natlu Ma'alehem, they had to take it themselves. They had to apportion out those areas that they, they received as a as a, as patrimony uh, themselves. Joshua and Moses did not actually do the apportioning. Achare Mot Yehusha 
after the death of Joshua, mitochkach, and because of this, iskir chamisha levad. This is why five are mentioned alone, v'sheva levad, and seven alone, because of that particular distinction. Now, let's try and put this together. The reason but this... Yeah, yeah, go ahead. I'm just going to say, because it's almost, you know, it's getting later. There's just one more small Rashi, and it's Numbers uh, 1820. Yes. But that was... The one you were talking about was 10-9. Mm -hmm. I think in Deuteronomy you're saying. Yeah, yeah. The, well, the Deuteronomy <coughs> ten nine. I thought you were saying your Pinchas was from, oh, was from Bami Bar something. Yeah. Yeah, that's later on. That's actually lovely. It comes up later on. Okay. But we're not going to do that today. Let me, if this is the last Rashi on our verse, yes, it is. Let's start. We'll do this and then Take take a moment, give you a chance to do your English. Okay. Kashir di Berlo, as he this is the end of this verse here, as he spoke to him, but at some it says, okay, so this is the point. Back in numbers, right, God says to Aaron, and after he tells, after he's rewarding Aaron for withstanding the revolt of Korach. Uh, but goes on to say, but in, but, um, in their land, you shall not inherit, etc. I am your portion. Very quickly, and I still want you to do the English, Lauren, um, that essentially, I believe what Rashi is telling us is that because the Kenites, the Kenazites, and the Kadmonites were not included here, uh, that possibly they might have thought that the Levites could take an apportionment there, or uh, because Joshua and Moses weren't giving out the land, that somehow this was okay for Levites then to inherit um, these parts. Either, and I, I confess my own lack of clarity here, either because uh, the seven tribes had to uh, apportion it to themselves, or we're talking about something else entirely, and that is the Kenites, the Kedmonites, and the Kenizzites weren't included in those tribes that were across the Jordan on the west side. Lauren, go for it, and let's hear the translation you have. So from the beginning, it says, he shall have no inheritance, refers to the inheritance of the remainder. Among his brothers refers to the inheritance of the five. I don't know what this means. It appears to me, however, that across the Jordan and onwards is called the land of the five nations. And that of Sihon and Og is called the land of the two nations, namely the Amorites and Canaanites. Now the expression inheritance of the remainder is meant to include the remaining three nations of the 10 whose land God promised to Abraham, namely Kenites, Kenizzites, and Kadmonites. And that's Genesis 15, 19. The Sifre in the section dealing with the priestly gifts specified for Aaron expounds this in a similar fashion on the verse according to this Deuteronomy 10 9 therefore Levi has no portion or inheritance to admonish the Le Levite to take no portion in the inheritance of the Kenites the Kenizzites and the Kadmonites it has since been found in the words of Rabbi Kalonymus that the proper version of this passage in the Sifre reads this um, and he will have no inheritance. This refers to the inheritance of the five. Among his brothers refers to the inheritance of the seven. Rashi now explains this version of the Sifre. The first reference is to the inheritance of the five of the 12. The second is to the inheritance of the remaining seven tribes of Israel. Now Moses and Joshua portioned inheritance only to the five tribes, Moses to Reuben, God and half the tribe of Manasseh, Joshua to Judah, Ephraim and the other half of the tribe of Manasseh. The remaining seven tribes took their inheritance by themselves after Joshua's demise. Thus, because of this distinction between these five former tribes and the seven latter ones, the Sifre mentions five and seven separately. As he spoke to him, i.e. to Aaron, saying, you shall not inherit in their land, I am your portion and your inheritance among the children of Israel, Numbers 1820. So uh, what I did was read the parenthetical parts, not, you know, stopping to segregate them. So let me, let me just clarify. Yeah, that, that helps. Yes. 
Okay, I also feel that it basically what I said to you before was in fact what goes on, but I have one other clarification. There are two interpretations of Nachalat Sha'ar. Rashi gives us two alternative explanations. One is that the Sha'ar refers to the Canaanites, the Kenites, and the Cadmonites, right? Because we talk about the seven Canaanite nations, he tells you which ones they were, right? And then because the Kenites, Cadmonites, and Kenazites weren't included amongst the seven, the Levites have to be specifically told they do not get an inheritance, even with those other those remaining three nations. That's one interpretation. Another interpretation, which is the one he finds in Colonimus, talks about, makes it refer to the tribes of Israel, okay? And that and having to do with the fact that five of the tribes had to were apportioned by Moses and Joshua, and because the remaining seven had to sort of figure it out for themselves as to what they were getting, we might think that that was an exceptional situation, that, that somehow the Levites might take a portion amongst them, just like the other seven tribes were figuring it out for themselves, and that's why we have to have that's what the Sifrei meant by Nachalat Sha'ar, the, the inheritance of the remaining. Remaining there meaning the remaining seven tribes of Israel. So again, just to clarify, we are talking about two different explanations of this particular phrase. And I hope that I hope that makes it pretty clear for you now. And we can say Kaddish Darabhanan. I have a, an appointment to go to, but we can say it now as far as okay. if people can All right, show so themselves. I'm going to stop the share and let's go ahead. And I'll also stop the recording and we'll go ahead and do that. So. Hey, Tish.